Question number 12. Another very straightforward question from thermodynamics. One mole of monoatomic, oh, monoatomic, that means the value of gamma has to be 5 by 3, undergoes an adiabatic expansion. So quite obviously the temperature has to fall. And by how many times will it fall? For that you have the data here, the volume becomes 8 times. And from this particular data, we need to find the decrease in internal energy and the initial temperature has been given as 100 Kelvin. And to simplify our calculation, R has been given as 8.0. Let's see. The first thing that we require is TV gamma minus 1 is constant. That's for adiabatic process. Now the initial temperature, initial volume, final volume is given we can easily calculate the final temperature and the calculation is also quite simple. And when you calculate the final temperature very easily without any hassle, you get 25 Kelvin. Now, I got the final temperature. So the change in internal energy that has to be NCV delta T and that NCV delta T, when you calculate it, you get it as minus of 900 Joule. So the decrease in its internal energy, the decrease part we need to write, and that value comes out to be 900 Joule. All right, so the correct answer for question number 12 comes out to be 900. Now let's move to question number 13. Question number 13 from modern physics, photoelectric effect. And this is also an area from which one can always expect a question from the topic into JE, of course, exceptions can't prove the rule. Many times it may not, but it has a high probability. The question is straightforward. It may involve a bit of calculation. Let's say, in a photoelectric experiment, a parallel beam of monochromatic light with power 200 watt, this is the power, is incident on a perfectly absorbing cathode of walk function. In other words, the power has been given, the walk function has been given. I'll just put everything in terms of variable, then at the end we'll be putting the value. So here I'll be saying P is given, the walk function phi is given. Now, another important data has been given here. The frequency of the light is just above the threshold frequency. Now just notice the word, just above the threshold frequency so that the photoelectrons are emitted with negligible kinetic energy. In other words, the phi, the walk function, would also be equal to energy of one photon as per the data, which is very straightforward. Because it says that the frequency is just above the threshold. So in that case, energy of light incident would be equal to walk function of the metal. And then assuming that the photoelectric emission efficiency is 100%, that means for one photon, there will be one electron emitted. Normally, the efficiency is not 100%, but here it's given. After that, see the electrons come out. A potential difference of 500 volt is applied between the cathode and the anode. In other words, if this is the cathode, this is the anode, then electrons would be emitted with negligible kinetic energy and this is being maintained at 500 volt, in other words, capital V is also been given. All the emitted electrons are incident normally on the anode. Another assumption, series of assumptions are there and are absorbed. That means they are not reflected, they are absorbed. The change in momentum would be P minus zero, where P is the momentum which comes just before striking the anode. The anode experiences a force of this much Newton and we need to calculate the value of n. So a straightforward question here, what I will do is that first of all n is equal to p upon e where e can be replaced by phi. So this is the number of photons emitted per unit time and this is also the number of electrons emitted per unit time. And these electrons would be starting with zero momentum and these electrons reach the anode. So let us see what is the kinetic energy 
of one electron by the time it reaches the anode and that's going to be E times V. And with this kinetic energy, the momentum can be written as root of 2EV times M. So that's the momentum of one electron when it hits the anode. And the number of electrons striking per unit time is this. Apart from that, the momentum of electron is also equal to the change in momentum because immediately after the impact, the momentum is zero. So calculating the force now should not be a problem. When we calculate the force, that force will be equals to N multiplied by P. The change in momentum and number of electrons striking per unit time. So this is capital P by phi multiplied by 2EVM. It involves a slight amount of calculation and when you calculate this particular thing, this will come out to be 24 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 Newton. That's the calculation which comes. And here, uh, that is 24 into 10 raised to the power minus 4. That comes on calculation. And here we need to compare this with the given expression of force. And given expression of force here is n into 10 raised to the power minus 4. So this value of n has to be equal to 24. So 24 would be the correct answer for question number 13. And now it's time to go to question number 14. Let's see.